Well, how does Australia stack up as an investment destination for international investors? It's a question probably worthwhile revisiting given so many guests recently have suggested that we're in an enviable position of having what the rest of the world wants. Our next guest says the demand for Australian listed equities has experienced significant growth recently, backing up those claims. Let's welcome to the show Jason Palchowicz from OTC Markets. He joins me here in the studio. Uh, Jason, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, for those of you who are not aware of what OTC Markets is, just give us a bit of a rundown before we go and get into some of the benefits. Sure. So OTC Markets is actually the largest stock market in the U.S. for non-U.S. equities. Um, we have over 70% of the companies quoted on our market actually come from outside the U.S., and those companies do that because we give them the ability to be quoted in U.S. dollars and trade during U.S. market hours without the cost and complexity of being Sarbanes-Oxley compliant and SEC registered. So by providing these companies who are listed on a qualified foreign exchange and, and produce their disclosure in English the ability to trade in the U.S., we allow them to access that U.S. investor base with much less cost complexity um, than being listed on a, a traditional U.S. exchange. Jason, just in the introduction, I was talking about so many of our guests have come on and, of course, being a big commodity producing nation at the moment uh, and so many you know, people desiring to go and secure supply chains, energy security and the like. What are you seeing when it comes to demand for Aussie equities at the moment? Um, we're seeing significant growth and increase, part of the reason I'm here. Um, certainly, we're seeing Aussie companies actually looking to take advantage of that increase in demand out of the United States. The number of companies that we've brought to the U.S. from Australia last year kind of grew to close to 60. This year, we're on track to, to increase that even more. From a mining mineral resource perspective, the U.S. has always traditionally been a market with a significant number of investors that use kind of their discretionary investment income to invest in, in resource sector. Uh, traditionally, Canada has been one of the largest markets for us as those resource companies tap the U.S. market. Uh, and Australia is now starting to really take advantage of that and see that as an opportunity both to increase their U.S. exposure, also to help with valuation and liquidity here in Australia. You mentioned that uh, an increasing number of Aussie firms have gone and, uh, and gone onto the platform. Can you give us some of the names that have come on and don't know why the factors were behind it? Um, well, we have companies like Endeavor and Illumina, companies like Deep Yellow. Um, again, a lot of the resource companies that we're seeing coming on, again, tapping that U.S. traditional high net worth retail investor that couldn't come directly into Australia, but play a significant part of the ecosystem in terms of mining and resource investment. As of late, companies like PointsBet um, or BrainChip, Australian technology companies that are looking to access that same pool of investment. Um, what's interesting in the U.S. is traditionally there's a number of investors, investor types, that are much more willing to invest in, in pre-revenue or um, high growth opportunities, whereas some of the rest of the world looking more towards dividends and, and revenue. And so that's a real pocket of investment that companies are trying to, to tap into uh, to supplement what they're doing in their home market. You mentioned uh, off the top there just some of the, the regulatory situations and don't know the considerations if you want to go and have a dual listing. So what are some of the advantages that you can go and offer Australian listed firms that don't know they can't go and get elsewhere? Right. Well, traditionally, to be dual listed in the United States, the, the thought is you have to be on the New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ. By doing that, you're actually becoming an SEC reporting company. Uh, you're subject to Sarbanes-Oxley. You have to reconcile uh, your accounts to U.S. GAAP. And so you're being duplicative in your reporting, which increases risk. It increases cost, it increases complexity. On our market, what we afford companies is through an SEC exemption, um, which has a very sexy name, 12G32B. <laughs> companies that are listed on a qualified foreign exchange that are making their disclosure available in English through our market are exempt from all of those things. So you can have a ticker symbol, a US ticker symbol, again, that trades in US dollars during US market hours and links back into the home market in order to provide that liquidity. So it's a really cost-effective, easy way to access that large pool of U.S. investors without that duplicative reporting requirement, without the increase in D&O insurance and all the things that go along with the traditional U.S. listing. You obviously I know here in Australia at the moment, but I know you've been around the region over the last uh, couple of weeks as well. Tell us about some of the other exchanges that I know you can go and other markets that are available to U.S. listed uh, U.S. customers. Um, so we have companies from all over the world. Uh, some of our largest clients, Roche out of Switzerland, Adidas out of Germany, Marks and Spencer. Um, so really anywhere where there's a company, large or small, that's trading on the local market, but that has interest in supplementing their shareholder base or their liquidity with pockets of money from the U.S., 
can take advantage of, of the, the platform that we provide. What are some of the things that uh, investors should be looking forward uh, to what potential offerings might be coming down the line? Um, well, we continue that you can, that you can that disclose I can tell, to us. We continue to see strong demand from uh, biotech, pharma, and green tech. Uh, that seems to be what really the focus is right now. Um, U.S. investors are very keen to continue to invest in kind of green tech resource companies, anything related to electronic batteries or, or the like. Um, gaming is something. Uh, mm. that, that we're seeing significant amount of interest in, especially as the U.S. has kind of opened up um, gambling. And so we're seeing international companies traditionally that were kept out of the U.S. market because of that reason coming in. Points bet, kind of, I mentioned them. Yep. Um, as well as, you know, Australia has the benefit of, of outperforming. And so as we're seeing pullback in traditional tech investment in the U.S., uh, those investors are, are offsetting those investments looking at um, some of the more traditional, uh, stable environments to put, to put their money into.